welcome to Let's Stamp with Phyllis. This past weekend, I sat down and I played with a new set that I have. It's called Sketched Birthday. And I really like the sets that have sketched in them because the images are really, they're actually sketched. And they're really great for watercoloring. Um, you can just have a really good time with them. So what I did, and let me show you this card I made, is I created a bunch of balloons. Now, you can see there is only one balloon stamp in this set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you with a little masking how you can create a bunch of balloons with that stamp. So let me go ahead and get started. And I've gone ahead and I've mounted my stamp. And I'm going to take some post-it notes and these are um, sticky all the way. Not just on that strip, but they're sticky all the way. So they're really nice um, for masking. And I'm going to stamp with my stays on jet black ink. And I just need the balloon. So I'm going to stamp it. And I probably will need more than one mask. So let me go ahead and do this three times. Okay. Now, when you cut out mask, it's very, very important to cut inside the line. And when I mean don't cut on this line, you wanna cut inside it. So when you're done, you will have the line outside or the line on your scratch paper. And there's a very important reason for this. You know, when you try to hurry up, because I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, gee whiz, I get to watch her cut. See how that's my image, it doesn't have any lines, and the line is right there? That's the way you want it. So let me go ahead and cut this other mask out. And they don't have to be perfect. You just have to make sure you have enough that's gonna cover the balloon, okay? So there's my second one. And let me do my third one. And of course, if your image is a little light, it really doesn't matter because this is just a mask and nobody's going to see it. Okay, so. And yes, when I'm doing this by myself, I do sit here and hum and sing to myself. Okay, now I have my little mask. I'm going to go ahead and let me get my stays on jet black. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my first image. Now this is the image that's going to be when you are designing your card. It's going to be the closest to you. So I'll just do it. No, I'll do it right in the middle. Okay. Now, and I always, I have my paper piercer, which is probably my most absolute favorite tool in the whole wide world. I've covered that balloon. And now I'm going to stamp a balloon on side, on the side of it. And you can see I stamped some on the mask, and that's fine. And then I'm going to stamp one. Oh, let's stamp it up here. Okay. Now I want some more balloons. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up. And let me stamp right here. And right here. Now, I really don't need this one, I don't think, down there, so let me cover that one up. Did you see how, right there, how it looks? It's so cool when you take the mask off. Okay, and so then I'm going to stamp one, and I want it to go right between those two balloons. Okay, so now let me take these masks off. And look at that. Is that like the coolest thing? <laughs> I know. It excites me. Okay. So I just want to go ahead and create some over here. So I'm going to put a mask back there and a mask there. And let me do that one there. And now I can start doing some over here. So I'll put that one there. And you know, I just might leave it right there. I think I'm going to. Okay, and now I have a bunch of balloons. 
I just think that this look is so awesome and it just looks like a bunch of balloons flying through the air. Now, um, I'm just going to show you quickly how I would color one of the balloons because people ask how, you know, what's your preferred method. Since this is a Whisper White, I like to use my blender pen. Um, I don't like to use the aqua painter because quite frankly on um, Whisper White it's just too wet, it gets too much water on the paper and it's just not fun. I'm not happy, my paper's not happy. So I'm going to go ahead and do my ink pads and most of the time when you open my ink pads you'll see that they have this cool little puddle here and this is why. This is Daffodil Delight. I'm going to take my blender pen and I'm just going to kind of scribble to make sure that there's nothing, no color on it. Even though it's stained, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you go like that and there's no ink, it's ready to, ready to be used. I'm going to go ahead and pull that. Oh, let me show you how I got the ink in there because every once in a while you come across an ink pad that doesn't have that. And I'm keeping it closed and I just kind of press the lid to the ink pad and that's how you get the ink there. Duh. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull up some of my ink and I'm just going to color where the shaded lines are first on this side. One of the things that you'll learn um, with Stampin' Up! where the dark, darker part of the image is, a lot of times they'll shade that so you already know. They take a lot of the guesswork out and it really makes life so much easier. So now I'm going to go back over it again and in a circular motion I'm just going to kind of go around the dots and just come over here and do that and then let me just come over one more time. Now if you want to change or add some more darkness to it, that part, um, <clears throat> let it dry completely because by the time Right now, the, the paper's a little moist from the blender pen, and if it gets too saturated, you're not going to be able to work. It's going to pill up, um, so you, and you don't want that. But after it dries completely, you can go back in and add a little bit. Now, I want to go ahead and color in my spots on my balloons, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this in Daffodil Delight also. But hopefully, because of the image, the way it's done, when I color it, it just instantly makes it look darker. Now let me just show you, I'm going to color one more balloon for you. And I will do this one in Old Olive. Ha! Right here. And I know my Old Olive has ink in it because I do this all the time. So again, see how I'm going to scribble off now and I've got some Daffodil Delight. When I'm watercoloring and doing this, where was my... Oh, let me show you. Let me show you what my my scratch paper ends up to be like. See, see all the scribbles. That's what happens. Um, and this is what I used yesterday when I was stamping. So, let me go ahead and do the second balloon. And again, I'm just going to pull up some of the ink and go over that that side right there. Do a little bit right there where that lines are. Then I'm going to go again and start in there. And then I'm going to come out. When you come out, it's going to be lighter. And see, the more you color on it, the lighter it is. Again, when you watercolor, you don't have the same intensity of color on your object. So in certain places, it's going to be darker than others, and that's okay. So don't, if you want it to be an all-even tone, that's not really how watercoloring is, and do not stress. Now, because I have one balloon underneath the other, I want to do a little shadow from this balloon to that. So I'm just going to take my, I'm sorry, I'm pushing my cat away. I'm just going to take my blender pen and I'm dabbing or just coloring a little bit of darkness. Now you can see it makes this balloon pop out even more because we've done a little shadow there. Okay, so then let me just color in my dots and here comes another cat. Let me just push him out of the way. That's not going to happen. That is Dugan, the black cat. They love to be in here when I'm stamping. They just like to be, what's, see what's going on. Okay, so that is how I colored my balloons. So let me go ahead and show you. Um, this Celebrate image is also in the stamp set right here. And this matches our Itty Bitty Banners um, framelit set, which is nice because you can stamp it and then you can cut it out with your Sizzix and you don't have to worry about like actually 
like cutting it with your scissors. Um, although I did cut the little celebrate out and mounted it on top. I also did a little bit of shading on here. I guess I should show you that. Let me do that real quick. And I used Smoky Slate. Smoky Slate is one of our new colors. And when I do my shading around the outside of the image, this is just, again, to make the image stand off of or pop off of the cardstock. So I'm just going to do it right around this part that I've stamped. And I really want this light. So what I do is kind of mix it up here. And then I just kind of pull it, not to get too much. And I'm just going to lightly dab it around and just go around here. And then just kind of blend it out a little bit. Okay. And there it is. And you can see, and it'll look much better when this image is colored, but it just kind of gives the shading underneath the balloon and makes the balloons pop like they're actually going through the air. Okay, so that is um, doing some masking and showing you how to watercolor with the blender pen and the uh, ink pads. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at www, I'm sorry, email me at letstamp at cox.net and my website is www.letstamp.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it and have a great stamping day. Thank you. Thank you.